What's going on? I'm David from Extreme Vocal Institute, and this is Joe from Fit for a Not Top Shape. What's up? And we're back. Yeah, uh, a year later. And how do your treats you? Pretty good. We've uh, we've done a lot since then. Uh, I think when was the last time we saw you guys? That was the. It was Metal and Hardcore last year. Metal and Hardcore, and then we did like two Trivium tours, right? We did yeah. Arch Enemy and Trivium, and then Trivium took us out on the other one, and we went to Europe for a little bit, and yeah, now we're back here at the fucking Palladium. Sorry, am I allowed to curse? Yeah, you're fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> The students won't mind. All right, cool. <laughs> so, with all the all the crazy touring and like how you've been all over the place this mm. past year, do you feel like you've personally changed at all as like a vocalist oh, or yeah. an artist? Oh yeah, I feel like time? I feel like every year it's a, it's always a constant change. Like you're always constantly growing, especially if like you you want to keep growing and stuff. Yeah. So like uh, I've been trying like a whole bunch of different voices or just different approaches to voices and just trying to figure out how I can make myself have more control and like not. Uh, compromise power at all so like I still want to have that very big powerful prominent voice but I want to start screaming a little more legibly so you understand every word I'm saying but also keep those dark tones and maybe some like those pitch singy stuff yeah. Yeah. Do you do fun. that kind of experimentation, like actually in the moment on stage? Sometimes. Um, so sometimes yeah, on, on tour is usually the best time to like try all of that stuff. As much as it is pretty risky, yeah. you kind of just have like kind of have to have the confidence within yourself to be able to like just do it. So yeah. I just put on pretend confidence and I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then venture out like just a little outside of what your normal comfort zone is. Yeah. So it's not like you sound like a totally different person. Yeah. Exactly. When you're trying those exactly. Because like uh, a lot of people try to sound like their favorite vocalist but in the end like you're never going to sound like your favorite vocalist you're going to sound like what you can physically do with yeah. your voice and your body like no one's going to like you can you can recreate a sound and sound just like whoever you want that's cool but then you're just the, someone else can just go listen to that guy instead <laughs> so it's like it's nice to have that separation you know that's good to really hone more of what your own voice exactly is. exactly speaking of just your voice and everything with everything you guys have planned for the future do you mm. feel like all of these different sounds that you've been experimenting with for the last year have made it onto the newer stuff that you've been working on yeah so we've been currently working on a new record right now mm. um and i've been trying a bunch of different voices but nothing too far different more or less um a more controlled version of what i was doing so what I was doing was good at the time, yeah. but now that I'm starting to do it better and more comfortably and have more control, it's so much easier and nicer, and I feel like I'm completely changing my sound to a little more professional, I feel. Yeah, and it's kind of tighter, and you can hear a little bit more of the clarity coming through. Yeah, clarity's bit. always been like a huge thing with me, and it, it'll always be stuck in my head, but like when I was recording um, just like local shit when I was like 16 years old at like Five Towns College, um, I was recording with like a band I was in, they were all like 25, yeah. I was 16 years old and uh, I was screaming he's like can you like I want to understand the words that you're saying so that alone just hearing that once every day I apply that to everything that I do literally everything so it's like yeah yeah since I was 16 I'm 29 now that sucks <laughs> <laughs> If you want to get better, you're going to progress through the years, especially with how much we tour and everything. I constantly want to put on a better show every single day. I want the next show to be better than the last and better than the last, better than the last. Exactly. And then also, like, just as, as people age and as time goes by, especially as a touring artist, you'll find that you have to kind of approach things in a different way over time yeah. to get the same kind of result or, exactly. like, find better ways to do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's all about technique, man. You do the right technique, and sometimes you will change your technique. You can be doing the same technique for five years, and then, like... Maybe after five years, you find something that works a little bit better for the style that you're going for. Because yeah. we all like to change our styles a little bit. We don't want to go too crazy off the spectrum, but you always want to try to uh, try to push the limit a little more. We talked about this earlier with like higher screams specifically, mm -hmm. yeah. and the difference between performing them versus recording them. Yeah. We were talking a little bit about that. What was that like yeah. for you? Oh, dude, doing highs on stage all fucking day. So <laughs> easy. Like it's so much fun to do. And as soon as you get into the studio you feel like uh, you never did a high scream in your entire life. <laughs> like, I sat there, and I, I did, like, when we were working on this new stuff, I literally just went to the studio. like, let's try these highs. So, like, I jumped in, went straight into it, and I just sounded like a dying bird. And I was like, well, uh, give me a second, Will. <laughs> Maybe I need to 
did warm up, <clears throat> uh, which I did warm up beforehand, but it just, I wasn't I getting like the sound. Wrong, I was having wrong. a heart attack. So I, I called one of my friends and I was like, I'm having a heart attack. He's like, dude, I wish I could say something to help you. But we, it's its all trial and error for all of us. It kind of sucks. And I was like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to figure out a certain way. So I actually messaged Melissa Cross. <laughs> I was like, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. And she told me a few things. Just try to keep it as natural as possible. And remember, you don't need to be too loud. And um, control, 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 control. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Just like do it without the headset for a little bit. And then go back to it with the headset. And then see how you feel. Maybe take an earpiece off just so you could hear it your throat over what you're hearing in the headset. Maybe yeah. turn down your voice in the headset so you could be able to like not hear the airy breath that goes on when you're doing those high screams. Because then you your ear starts to focus on that and then your confidence comes right down. And then yeah. when you don't scream confidently, you scream like shit. And it's important as it is to like think about the technicality sometimes. It's really easy to get like two in here. Oh dude, as soon as things. I get in my head, I need to like I need to step away, take a yeah. drink of water, take a little walk. Get back in the mode and then boom, come right back to it. Usually, usually I can come right back and be like, all right, I don't know what I was stressing about, but here I am. <laughs> I'm kind of excited to see how that uh, gets perceived to all y'all out there. <laughs> That's exciting. And I know on the last tour that you guys did with Unearth, you were mm -hmm. experimenting a bit with a newer song. Yeah. How is that for you guys starting to get this newer material out it's there? It's cool, man, because like, you know how it is. Like, you tour on a record for a year, two years, you've played those songs so many times people want to obviously oh, hear oh, them all and it's like cool yeah no we would love to play them but like physically you got to understand for us we play that those songs so much that we want to play something as musicians we just like to play newer stuff that we write so yeah. but um i mean we'll always still keep it cool to the fans and just try to play as much cool shit as we can but we always want to try to try to get that new flavor in there because that's what makes us who we are it's exciting to kind of be doing something new to you yeah absolutely that excitement there the energy oh there. yeah you can't beat <laughs> oh dude not at all not at all like this tour that we're on right now is fucking incredible Some, like nuts oh yeah and being on this tour what is it i mean it's only been a few days but how's it feeling like with like the place you guys are in and being the style you guys are it's with cool. such a bill where you have like so many people in different directions that are like such heavyweights it's cool because areas. i feel like it's a little bit of a challenge for us to try to win that crowd over so yeah i don't like things just like handed to me i don't like things just being like oh this is so easy it's about the work for it yeah like yesterday first day it was just like a couple people up front then by the time like halfway through everyone was like super into it and i feel like if you win over that crowd it's a much better feeling than just like coming into people that are just like applauding because they're just trying to be nice of know? course yeah <laughs> i mean who knows they're probably still doing that anyway <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely super useful to understand how to really win over a crowd yeah without having to force it yeah yeah no if you force it it's like a fart you force a fart you're gonna get some shit man it sucks <laughs> It sucks. <laughs> write that down. Yeah, write that down. <laughs> Get it tattooed on your face and then send me a picture of it. <laughs> Oh god, that could cut back bad. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, if one of you guys gets that tattooed on your face, <laughs> to try and safely venture into a different direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. With that, things not vocal related. You've uh, been doing a lot with Twitch this past year, yeah, and incorporating a lot of your own name and your own personal brand into that. And mm. you've been even tying in bits of vocal work into this, like doing kind of like vocal play through things live on Twitch. Yeah. What kind of gave you that idea? And inspired you to kind of really dive into that world of things as um, much as you have so like it like so twitch is obviously like more or less a gaming platform a lot of people just like go to watch like gamers play all the time yeah and um uh, recently a couple of us metal dudes like me myself like matt heafy tyler from traders tom from chelsea grin like a bunch of dudes are all starting to do the twitch streaming thing yeah. um and matt approached me he's like you should do some like extreme vocal uh like uh streams and i was like that could be cool. He's like, dude, kids would love to like watch you just like scream, not on stage, and like actually listen and maybe learn something and like understand, maybe ask you some questions. I was like, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. But with that being said, I didn't want to do make vocal streams my main thing for Twitch because when I'm home from tour, 
I'm on vocal rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm trying to like, like, granted, I do my practice every day and stuff like that. I try to do it like maybe like once a month or twice a month and then just do like some Q&As if anyone has some questions about like how they can improve or any little technique things or warm up stuff. Like always yeah. ask in the chat, you know? It's a cool opportunity to be able to show people more of like the detail of what you're doing in an environment where like it's just really exposed. Exactly, exactly. Which it's, it's super sick. Twitch has been really awesome. I have a really good community. Um, the Wolfpack baby. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Jobad. <laughs> yeah. Amazon Wolfpack, Farm. does that come with the ears? Wolfpack? No, 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 no. It comes with a sweet... Uh, actually, we have... Um, so when you subscribe to the channel, you get like this little wolf uh, picture next to your name. So it's actually pretty Oh, cool. you actually put that on. Yeah, yeah so it's like cool. your badge. It's cool. <laughs> so people know where you're coming from. The Joe Bad exclusive. Mm. <laughs> but how was PAX East for you coming up here to great. Massachusetts? Super sick. Like, uh, I picked up Tyler and Tom, and we drove up to Boston and did the whole video game thing. Met a bunch of people over at PlayStation, tried some new games. I'm endorsed with Astro, so I was over at the Astro booth. We were playing Super Smash, and we met the guys from Anthem that created Anthem. So it was just like a lot of nice connections, a lot of good people, a um, ton of video games, and cosplay, and everything new games small developers like trying to come up with new games like Sweet. super sick yeah just met a lot of really cool people there it's a great connection spot it's kind of like the diet nam of the video game world because e3 yeah. is like the above and beyond nam for yeah for like video game world okay. which is crazy which i'm also going to this year it's cool to have nice yeah i got invited to e3 june 11th to 13th california yeah it's super sick it's cool to have i uh, be able to take your time off tour and be able to venture into different things like i get I bored when i get home too long, when i have nothing to do at home <laughs> i was gonna say it seems like you kind of ventured more into like the hair game too recently yeah. like everything you did for new york fashion week yeah like, that's crazy yeah it was pretty cool man like shout out to joseph dimaggio who took me out to uh fashion meets fashion on instagram mm -hmm. uh he took me out and showed me this whole different world of like fashion that i had no idea i did eight days of fashion week working runway shows like shit that i never thought i'd do before yeah, in my really life really different environment crazy dude and yo he is so good at what he does like yeah. it's unbelievable it's unbelievable i've never been in that field and he crushes it man so seriously that's cool yeah the last thing i was going to ask you just with the vibe that you guys brought tonight here in worcester like the fun element of mm -hmm. things how important is it to you to just keep having a good do a good time doing what you're doing, even though it's been a while of being in the band and pushing the product, pushing um, the album? I mean, at the end of the day, you're still up there doing your job, like play, doing what you love. So like, I have no complaints about anything, no matter what goes on behind the scenes or anything. Every time I have my, my half hour to myself up there and do my thing, it's like the best time of my life. I wouldn't trade it for anything. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good to hear. Yeah. We're looking forward to hearing the new stuff that you guys put out and seeing you guys the next time you come through. Mm -hmm. Looking oh, forward to it. Thanks again for making yeah. time for us today. Thank you for having me. This is Joe from Fit for an Autopsy. I'm David from the Screen Vocal Institute, and we'll see you soon. Wolf is. <laughs>